And now we're live. We did it. Nice. Yeah. Um. And fixing things. Okay. Cool. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hello, everyone else. But, uh, me and Suki are gonna be doing some uh, League of Legends review today because we didn't have any Smash vods, so. We're gonna yeah. uh, we're gonna get started with that and get get caught up a little bit. Um, we've got two vods from Showy, and, and we have one uh, from uh, Spoon. Didn't we do that Cassidy one from Spoon? Am I making that there's up? One, there's one above that. That's a Vagar one. Oh, cool. All right, we will do that as well. Sorry, I missed that. Let me pull that up as well. We'll uh, get ready in a little bit here. Yes, we we did do the Cassidy. Oh yeah, I missed this this one. Okay, and. Good. All right, we're we're ready. We got tracker. Oh god. Okay. There's the. I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm missing a YouTube link. No. Okay. First we'll probably and start foremost. With the, um, yeah, I think we'll probably start with the the Jin vod from Shoei Cult from a while back, just to to get that one to him. I don't know if he's watching live, but uh, you know. I feel like it's discourtesy having missed it for a while to to get that one to him. Right, and please hold. I had things backwards, so everything looks all weird on my Streamlabs. Please bear with me, y'all. Oh man, you know what I also forgot? My little black mage avatar. We gotta get that up here too. Forgot to do your ranked all. Also forgot ranked all. All right, sorry. I'm fixing everything. Mm -hmm. Everything's getting fixed. Okay. We did it. Hello, it's me. Nice. Okay, Rankle, League of Legends, let's do it. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. That has a layer of difficulty, it's not NA. Yeah. Bueno, pueden ir a los... Probably land. Um, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go diamond on that one. Yeah. It's either diamond or masters. R-E-M-F bot lane? If it's, if it's masters, it's, it's diamond NA. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking diamond. Because the sidesteps were good, and Lan is pretty coin flip. It it like Lan, it could be anything, but sure. it looked okay. All right, I'll go diamond. Oof! Ouch! That was a good silver play, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean the cane play was whatever, but like the Nami was juking. Yeah, the Nami was dodging and weaving. That's interesting. All right. That's okay. It's okay. We're we'll try again. Yep. Brand mid against Ori. Yeah, brand mid is interesting. Good flash. Insta flash away. Feel like it's pretty bad to not flash over wall there. Flash smite, no abilities up. Not dodging stun. Maybe. Oh, man, now I'm nervous. I feel like. The mechanics look good, but there's definitely some flaws in the decision making around the mechanics. Yeah. So, I want to say like gold, maybe yeah. plat. No, I'm going gold. This feels low. I'm going gold on that one. Yeah. What is this? That's masters. What is happening? <laughs> wow. All right. That's okay. I mean, that was also not an A, so it's it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Vein. Bot QSS, so we're using our brain to build. Yeah. I'm gonna restart and, this and once quality pops in. Yeah. If quality ever pops in, uh, what is happening? No condemn, bad QSS. Uh, oh, wow. The itemization's good. But 
the mechanics are really mediocre, and the QSS was really bad. Oh. I want to go gold on this one, too. You think so? I think that's higher than gold. Really? The QSS was really bad, didn't use Condemn, didn't dodge any abilities, got bailed out by Lulu, everyone spammed Ping Vane, even though Lulu did the work. Yeah. It could be higher, because evidently I'm not good at this, but... <laughs> I'll try gold. It's diamond. Masters. Masters. What? I don't yeah, know. No wonder. no wonder my games feel so bad. <laughs> Alright, well, rough day for Rangdel, but we'll, uh, for we'll get into good VOD review. We are starting with Showy Colt's Gym. Showy Colt up to Bronze 2. Which is great. Yep. Yeah. Making some progress. Really... 80 LP too. Yeah. This game is from three weeks ago, so you'll have to scroll down quite a bit to find it. But yeah. it is there. You'll notice it because there's a twisted fate support. It's further down. A little bit further up. There it is. Top fate. Where is Twisted Fate? Why can't I find him? There he All is. the way on the okay. right. He's we did it. in the support role. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. You have twisted fate support. You go sixteen and two. Okay, we get a we get a we get a hard carry win. Yeah, two deaths is what I like to see. Yeah, we obviously won the game pretty hard here. Um, the CS is not as high as I would like it to be, but it's higher than the last bot, so yep. that's better. Trending up. Obviously, in a game where you stomp this hard, you're fighting a lot, so it's hard to CS, but. We do want to make sure that, you know, you're prioritizing playing consistent, solid League of Legends over, like, coin flip League of Legends, right? So even if you can go for fights, they get you these kills. If those fights go bad, they lose you the game, right? So yep. you want to go for that consistent, like, you know, if your enemy makes a mistake, punish it. But if there's a free wave bot lane, like two waves stacked, just go get the wave, right? And if you do that consistently and look for it consistently and make it a priority, you'll typically always have above 7 CS a minute. Um, but 6 is definitely higher than it was last spot. So as far as I'm concerned, six is is definitely better. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's uh let's get into this one and oh, let's check notes beforehand. Um Show we call it two twenty, that sounds about correct. It's been a little while. Play more ranked. How are we doing? Pretty consistent. I don't think we're playing I don't think we're playing very much. I mean all one things considered no no no, this is like one or okay, we we get a little gap there, but like no, Put, below that. It's look, it's, it's gaps everywhere. But this is so the tenth is when we actually made that suggestion, or the twentieth. No, you're right. Twentieth, starting the twentieth, we got three the next day, two the next day, one okay. the next day, two the next day, two okay, the next yeah, day. Definitely better since we made the suggestion. Looking better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, a little bit There's of a little gap there. A couple but... breaks there, but that's fine. That happens. I have that in mind yeah, too. Yeah. Yep. Life um, gets in the way. Yep. Um, runes and item guide. Did we share that with Shall We Cult? Yes, I, I, I handmade him a rune and item guide. Cool, good. All right. Practice tool skill shots. So we'll be taking a look at skill shots, making sure you're hitting things, and just checking on wave management. Fairly simple notes. Yep. Wave management and back timing, it, you know, having more CS in this game definitely means you were at least paying attention to that a little bit more. Um, but we will see how the early game goes. Yep. Because, you know, I think this game ends relatively fast. So, you know, I think the biggest problem Shoei Gold's had is, is moving away from CS for macro plays. And as you get later in the game, it gets harder and harder. And I think that's where his CS starts to suffer. It's like, you know, between 20 and 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes, he starts missing waves. Yep. Which is the, the natural tendency for players. So we'll have to see if the, that number looks good just because the game ended fast or if it looks good because we were prioritizing the right things. Five fighting, five pointing is okay here. Just for future reference, if your support or your mid doesn't watch that other entrance, just sit next to the blue buff, like not in the bush, but in that little, you know, crossroads. Otherwise, you can get flanked on really easily. If your team's not watching for you. Oh, I didn't ping everybody to tell them that we're live. I gotta do that. Duh. Uh -huh. I told everybody earlier, but yeah. Oh, 
Don't wait to fourth shot there. Just fourth shot and go to wave. There's no point in waiting for that like extra 10 damage from it being lower HP. Fourth shot and get the wave faster. There's no point in warding that that early anyway. So it's kind of good that you missed it. If a jungler's gonna level two you, if they're already in that bush, like if that's where you're seeing them, then it's already too late. So there's no point in warding that bush for level two. If you're warding for a level two, you wanna ward try. But even then, like it's typically just like against supports that you know will do that. Better ionization, we did go Doran's Blade into a, a one shot lane, so that's good. Good skill shot usage, good combo usage. Nice. Nice. Really well done. Yep, the minion. You wanna catch this next wave. You should shove this wave and then recall. So here, like, don't be afraid to, like, yeah, like, TF knows, but, like, don't be afraid to, like, spam ping TF, like, to help you shove this wave. If you know you need to get this wave in, just tell your support to help you shove it. You should be hitting the casters so you can open up a high damage Q to, like, insta one shot them. Yeah, here, you didn't auto them so they weren't low enough HP. That's really, really bad. No, we're there. overstaying, yeah. Yeah, we're overstaying. You have enough for a pickaxe here. A level two pickaxe is game ending. You should recall and get this as soon as possible. There's no reason to stay on a crash wave. Especially because like, if you crashed that earlier, like you were meant to, used your abilities to crash, then it would have been like instant, right? You would have had like a huge wave crash, Lux wouldn't have been back yet, you could have gotten the recall, come back free on pickaxe. Part part of the reason too, like obviously you could go get pickaxe, but one of the one of the things that I think is relevant to bring up here is like you have a th you got first blood, you have twenty farm, you have a thousand gold, but this Samira is not at all behind you right now because you yeah, have that's... not invested that gold. So like, yeah. regardless of how far ahead you think you are, because you got that kill, you are now not ahead. I mean, this looks is pretty low XP. Regardless, you need to be investing your gold so that you can actually have that lead. Because right, right now you don't. Yeah, that's the point I was making. Is if, <clears throat> if he doesn't get a kill there, crashing that wave, you just never recall on that. Yeah. But because you get the kill and Lux has to come back and Samira can't do anything on that timer, she just has to catch the wave. And because you can go get an item and come back with such an advantage, like you know, imagine if you're an ADC and level two, the enemy ADC comes back with a pickaxe, right? Like, just just go buy the pickaxe, especially if you have the timer for it. Like, obviously, if the wave is neutral and you're going to miss a ton of CS to go do it, don't. But, like, because you were able to kill her, you had, like, free autonomy to just, like, do whatever you wanted with the wave. And you could have just, like, hard crashed it, recalled all the pickaxe, come back, you know, lost nothing for it. And then it's been up a huge amount of damage on the Samira. So, like I said before, just, like, purposefully think about, like, what am I doing with my waves? Why am I hitting them? Why am I doing what I'm doing with them? We shouldn't with uh, let, uh, should not hit the wave here. We should just put a trap in the bottom bush so Lux can't walk into it, and let the wave start pushing back into us. So our TF can start looking for gold cards and we can start looking for kill angles because right now all we're doing is like perma crashing, but we don't really have a way to poke them. So she's just free CSing under tower, and we're just giving their jungle opportunities to come bot, and never really getting anything done with this wave. because now we're up to like 1200 gold and because we're pushing the wave like this there just isn't going to be a timer to back for a long time it's typically for a back timer right you either want to like neutral shove the wave so like minions die really early on both sides you get a timer to back before it meets again or you want to stack a wave into huge crash so you can back while they're catching right if you're just like neutral shoving like this where like you're shoving a small wave and they're catching it on tower it's just not efficient to get it back off on that timer. But you wanna make sure you're thinking about like what you're doing with your wave and why. Cause right here, you're just kinda like, you're literally doing nothing. You're f enough for a noon quiver in your back pocket and you're just doing absolutely nothing with it. You have traps up and you're not using them to defend against ganks. We see Warwick top, but it's still proactive, right? Traps last a while. And you wanna be placing them because they start regening the second you place one, right? You're not worried about mana right now. So far, I've seen real improvement in the W skill shot usage. Yep. Definitely a lot better Ws. But like, yeah, you have 1600 gold and 
this was like four minutes that you could have played to kill Samir or Lux again with, with enough damage from Pickaxe. But you've instead just been like neutralizing the lane, not creating any pressure, not creating any like kill potential, not creating any gank opportunity, just sort of mindlessly shoving the wave. And like here, where Samir is walking out from under tower and just like walking up to CS level HP, like you could have used that four shot on her and burned her W. You could just be looking for damage. Like she's not allowed to walk up to you here. It's kind of illegal for her to be there. And here, this is a recall timer. You're crashing a cannon. Really should be recalling here. You have 2k gold. This is like really, really, really bad. And now the recall feels really bad because they have three casters and you haven't full crashed. Really lucky that you're at a tower range there. Yeah. Like here, so we should just like insta crash this and then recall. We shouldn't greed for the plate, there's no point. Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> remember, what we, remember what we said about hesitation. No hesitation. It's really bad. You wasted so much time there. And you, you, when you come back with the lead that you've gathered in this lane, you will get that plate anyway. You have seven more minutes to get it. But now you're stuck here after bot lane's recalled, so Samira's about to come back with a lead on you. You have 2.4k gold, and Samira's about to come back with a lead on you. Because she backed and you didn't. And because you let her come back with her item, she can actually full clear this wave with Lux faster than you can recall and get a timer off because you screwed up your own timer. So now Samira, if she plays this well, is going to get a plate. So by getting that plate, you traded the plate to someone who was down, which if you're down gold, you should never be getting that, right? You should go pick X and tier one boots here. You have the lead, you have the advantage, you have the winning lane. Both these are okay, but personally, I don't think you need the tier two right now, and you could have afforded the tier one and the the big X. So I think that's better. Good Ws. Only thing I would say is like ping your W. You should heal Nunu there. We need to be aware of like when we can heal our teammates. Nunu does not need to die there at all, if you just heal him. And if you're placing traps underneath him so Samira is slowed, etc. Remember, like, using everything in our kit like we talked about last time? Something that you got better at last time that you're seeming to falter on a bit now. Here, like, just... Yeah, just play aggressive. Hit tower, hit Lux. You want to be placing traps above you in case Warwick comes. You haven't used your trap in like four years. It's fine. We should just like hard crash waves now. Just like perma hard push. Poke Samira off tower. What is the difference just for the sake of us trying to prove this point? What has changed that they should just be hard crashing waves now? Are they just that far ahead? Well, well, now Samir is alone in lane. Oh. So previously, both of them are in lane. So Samir, you can't really walk up and force yourself on Samir because Lux can always look for bind or they can always look for all in. Um, but when it's just Samira and you're both full HP, you can just walk at her under tower and force her off CS. Um, Fair, okay. So you didn't mean to stay and just continuously push waves. You just meant at the time you can just shove this wave and not worry about Samira. No, I meant you can you can continuously push. Oh, okay. Lux is gone. So you can, like, all TF has to do is walk up and use a gold card. She has to use W in reaction to it. If she doesn't, she gets hard checked out. Um, once her W is down, you just play on W cooldown because TF's gold card is lower cooldown than Samira's W. So you wait for the next gold card, gold card to tower, and then you can just insta one shot her on dive if she stays. Got it. So you can just hard push wave because you can push her. You, you, you're allowed to hard push wave here because you can facilitate hard pushing Samira off because she's alone. Previously, you're just shoving waves into Samira and you're just neutralizing and never setting up for a back timer. 
Um, so there's no point. Okay. You're never going to dive Lux and Samira at the same time. You're not going to force them off tower. You're just going to get a little bit of chip damage here and there. She's going to catch wave. It's going to neutralize. It's just knowing the extent of like your damage and what you can force on the enemy champion. Sure. We have good CS at 10. 80 at 10 is good. Definitely played lane a lot better this time in regards to CSing. But um, we would have that. We would have that same amount had we backed appropriately, right? Yes. Yeah. Definitely a lot better done in terms of just like actually mechanically CSing, but definitely not better in terms of like how we manipulated the wave, right? We yep. didn't do anything to the wave. So like part part of my my thought and concern here, like we go back to these notes that we gave, play more ranked, did it, cool. You get a rune and item guide, practice tool skill shots. Seems like you have either been doing that or you have just gotten more practice on Jin and therefore is skill shotting well. You're not handling wave management and back timings very long very well. So like we have another VOD for you, shall we call that we're gonna take a look at in a little bit here. Um, but like, if that doesn't improve in this VOD, we're just going to go next to the next VOD and see if this improves. And if not, like, this is your only note. Um, yeah, because we, the other, the other ones look like, obviously you still keep working on them. We'll keep prioritizing those, um, because they're still good to work on, um, because they're not perfect here. Right. Yep. But they definitely look a lot better. So, you know, in terms of like this VOD, we don't need to see more of you being good at that right now because we've seen that there's improvement there I'd rather look at the next vod to see if there's something new to practice or new to look at <coughs> yeah definitely like i mean it's not his only note like we definitely have to go back uh like you you've reverted to just never using your trap ever yeah like you really may as well not have leveled this ability the way you're playing you just haven't placed trap. Like, you've had multiple instances where you could have placed it above you to block Warwick gangs, where you could have placed it in the bush to block uh, Lux from walking in, where you could have placed it on wave to push harder, and you just haven't used it, like, once. So, that's, like, a, that's a regress, a uh, regression to how it was when you first came in for a VOD, right? Which is something we don't want to see. Good heal, just to make sure you're safe there. Yeah, pop pot. Yeah. There you go. Playing really risky there. Definitely not worth dying. Play a little safer. If they play that better and they kill you, it's just like a free shutdown and they get more plates, right? So like the risk is not worth you trading damage or getting two CS. And then like again, like you're playing way too far up there when you don't have the means to do so. Don't let yourself get baited by your teammates. We should just recall here. Stop hesitating. Like, against better players, if I'm Lux, if I'm Warwick, I am sprinting under your tower right now and insta-killing you. Because, like, Lux can walk to you. Warwick doesn't need help on Dragon. Lux can just walk behind your tower and QE you. At least stop your back. Let Samir push and get plates. Let Warwick come after Dragon to dive. Right? So we don't want to hesitate there. If we're too low to catch the wave, don't greed for the wave. Just recall. Definitely falling in CS right now, because that whole sequence. We were at 80 at 9, 80 at 10, and now we're at 92 at 12, which means we've gotten 12 CS in two full minutes, right? So, not great. Definitely not better skill shot usage there, but sometimes Jin R is like that. But look for guarantees. If your TF's going to be looking for a gold card or a red card, don't use your ult shots until he autos. Because it's easier to hit it on a slow target, right? So why waste your shots when you could just wait a second and then have way more guarantee? Place place your traps in front of you, like on your feet. You know where it's going to come for you, right? So there's no point in trying to place it in the bush. Just place it on you so that he can't sprint at you. Here, we just want to hard push and then reset because we have gale force and samira is not back yet so you have a timer to hard crash and then this insta recall there's no reason to place wards when you're leaving you're just wasting time on the ward 
It's going to take you about 60 seconds to recall, buy, get back to lane. More like 45 seconds. Recall, buy, get back to lane. So that's 40 seconds on like a 90, 100 second ward that you just, like, it's just a useless ward. It's not doing anything for those 40 seconds. So it's just not worth it to place it there. There's no reason, right? Like, you have minions. If they're in the wave, you're going to see them in the wave. And you stop your recall to do it, so you actually wasted time. You don't need to help him with the Gromp. You have a wave crashing on tower. Prioritize that. Okay, use trap. Use four shot on Samira W. Definitely want to be looking out for that, right? We don't want to waste that. No. Place traps above you. Yeah, there you go. So that trap should be coming out way earlier, right? He's dead. Gale force this. Gale force, Gale force. You should Gale Force earlier there. Yeah, not great skill shot usage. Still not placing a trap. Slow is a really valuable tool here. Just place a trap under him. Especially when he's gold card, just place a trap under him. If you place a trap under him, he's slowed, you can't get in range for Q on you. We're just not using our traps like we used to. So it's been another three minutes since I last said it, and we've gotten 24 CS, which is okay. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not great. You know, if you're at 80 at 10, you definitely don't want to be at 116 at 15, right? It's okay-ish, but we're definitely starting to slow down. And it's because we're taking really weird fights, right? We're not thinking about what we're doing with our wave, we're walking to random things, we're helping Nunu with Gromp for no reason. Good to look for that CS with W. It's a good, good trap. Just catch this wave at tower. You don't have a TF, so you can't play up. You just have to catch a tower. In these situations, you want to be placing traps, like, slightly in front of your tower, but like within the range of the tower, so that if they go for dive, they get slowed. It's easier for you to play it. Could see us under tower. Yeah. <laughs> Better. Nope. We don't need to walk into melee. Yeah, no right. melee. <laughs> Definitely no reason to walk into melee. Place traps. Please place traps. Use Gale Force here. You have Gale Force. You don't need to flash. You could have Gale Force there like 70 times to kill the Warwick, get out of the Luxar, and then you would have still had flash to dodge that. But, I mean, you had Gale Force to dodge that too. We need to be more aware of what Gale Force does for us as an item. It's not just an execute button. It's not just a combo with four shot. You use it to dodge, you use it to get out of a bad situation, you use it to kill someone, you use it to combo, you use it for, for tons of things in that situation that definitely should have been used to, to reposition yourself. Because you could have done both at the same time, right? You could have repositioned yourself away and killed the Warwick with the active at the exact same time if you just used it early, but it looked like we panicked a bit. But yeah, now we're 126 CS at 17 minutes, so we've gone up not very much CS in another two and a half minutes, right? So this is where we're starting to fall behind. We were at eight CS a minute, and by the end of this game, we fall to 6.2, right? So why is that happening? It's because we're taking weird fights, we're not prioritizing CS, we're not manipulating our wave, we're taking bad recalls, we're hesitating on decisions. You should be very scared here. You have no tower, you don't see Warwick, Dragon's up. You're pushed really far up with no help. He ends up being topside, so it's fine, but realistically Warwick should be on the bot side looking for Dragon here, and you're just dead if he is. Okay. Yeah. 
definitely don't want to four shot the tower there. You want to hold it for when TF gold cards this mirror. She'll use her W, and then you can four shot Q Gale Forcer, and then walk out, get the tower. Just way more guaranteed. Because if she doesn't use, like, if you waste four shot and tower there, and then she doesn't use her W for nothing, then she blocks the gold card, E's to TF, and then potentially kills him, and then just walks out, right? So. Waiting for BF is fine here. You want to be with your team, but... Going mid up to Green Bot Tower is the right call here. See, we're, we're ditching another wave to go help Nunu for no reason. And even though Nunu's safe, we're still ditching the wave. There's a whole wave mid lane. This is why we're falling down in CS. That wave's gonna hit tier 2. That wave's going to no one right now. That's like 150, 200 gold. And like 350 gold factoring in XP that we're just letting hit our tier 2 for absolutely no reason. And there's not even a dragon here. We're not playing on anything at all. We're literally, like, we may as well have been in base this entire time. That's okay. Like, like I've said before, we need to make sure we're understanding what the difference between capitalizing on mistakes and just coin flipping is. There's nothing, like, nothing you did there to kill Lux was, like, a good play by you. It's just, like, the Lux walked in and gave you a free kill, right? And, like, teams aren't going to do that. Being where you are isn't being ready to capitalize on mistakes. It's just, like, doing nothing, and then you got lucky because the Lux decided to walk in, right? Because you had no reason to believe she would be there and do that. So we don't want to make habits of looking for plays like that or doing that or feeling like it was a good thing to be there because we got a kill for it because it's not going to it's not something that's going to happen consistently especially if you're climbing here we should just recall on that timer there's no dragon your team's on the map so you can take time to recall you should just recall and get ie because it's a huge spike for you because now the enemy team's coming back onto the map lux is alive again and now if you recall they're going to have a timer to move and do something while you're off the map This is another recall timer. Lux is dead, wave's not met yet, so we should just recall and get, yep, let's get IE. Wait for Quick Cloak. Nope, just wait for Quick Cloak and buy a blue trinket here. You're level 11, you still haven't bought your blue trinket. Oh, hold on, I want to find this timer real quick. Twenty minutes, one hundred and thirty-eight farm. So you got yeah. eighty farm in the first ten minutes of the game, and then fifty-eight in the next ten minutes of the game. Yeah, and then it's since he regresses to six point two, it's fair to assume that he will continue to get about fifty-eight for every ten minutes that continues. He gets about 60 per 10. So we want to walk up mid here. There's no reason to push bot. If you're an ADC, you shouldn't be split pushing. Catching the bot wave is fine. One, this is a good left tower. But once you start ping ponging it, you should just go mid. Definitely shouldn't take this path. This is just like asking to die. Because you have no wards here. And you're not strong enough to 1v1 the Warwick. Or anyone else on the team, really. Because they're going to play range on you. Right, so now we're just like behind them for no reason, because we don't want to be here. If we just took the safe path, we wouldn't have gotten chunked out here. We would have been with TF to eventually look for kills. Right? Just a pathing issue, like understanding where you need to be, where your champion wants to be. Good skill shots. Yeah, good skill shots. Oh. Yep, yeah, heal, flash. It's a panic 
W. It's okay. Obviously really messy mechanically, right? But we're not looking for perfect mechanics here. Yeah. I think we can probably move to the next squad. Yeah, I think so too. Um, what do you what do you want to do as far as going to the next VOD? Um, obviously, I think, we, <laughs> we just, I think we just keep some loose notes, like on a notepad from this one, and yep. then watch the next one, and then combine them. And then we'll finish on uh, on spoons VOD. Cool, that sounds good. Um, macro, we're keeping wave management and back timings. Um, Yep. And this is what we're going to be focusing on, I think, pretty specifically here, because, like, we can't just keep, we can't just keep giving you this same note and it not getting rectified, right? Like, you rectified the other stuff, which is great, for the most part. Like, your alt skill shots, um, I'm writing in alt skill shots as a note, um, play off of teammates. Utilize and then E in micro. I've got utilize E more. Yeah, I think those are good for now. But the wave management and back yeah. timings is I'd what I want to really micro, see. Micro also like understands like the extent of what you can do with gale force. Because fairly consistently, you have only used Gale Force as a jump forward tool to kill somebody instead of a dodge tool or anything to that effect. Yep. Um I only use it as a kill. And then like like that'll that'll I think probably after the second VOD we'll we'll change that into like like what we said. We've given the note before, but like make sure you're using every aspect of your kit to its fullest. Because like, you know, you didn't heal the Nunu, you weren't placing traps, um you weren't using your abilities to push the wave. You weren't using Gale Force to dodge or do anything other than get kills, right? So, like, realistically, we can all, we can group that into like one note of just like you need to be using all of your, like, everything in your kit, everything that you have available to use, you need to be using to fullest, right? Like when you need it, obviously. But, um, you know, like if a kill's guaranteed, you don't need to Gale Force it, or if you're not going to die, I'm going to get a skill shot. You don't need to Gale Force dodge it, but make sure that like when you need it, you're using everything that you need to use. You're playing to your extent, like to the best you can play. Because yeah. in that game, despite winning very hard, you definitely didn't um, pressure them anywhere near as hard as you should have. Um, and you uh, definitely didn't use your abilities properly. The combos were good, like using grenade and W and like four shotting properly. Like the actual trade combos were a lot better this time. But I think we got lost in that and stopped thinking about like how we actually should use our abilities elsewhere. Yeah, CS is just like low overall, yeah, which it's, it, it, yeah, it, like like yeah. I said, it's because it's a it's a misunderstanding of like where to be late in the game. Like you yeah. don't under like you get caught up because your team starts fighting, so you run to it, or you think you need to do something or be somewhere you don't need to be, or you get like you feel like you need to clear vision when it's not your job as an ABC to clear vision um or you go bot lane and push one wave and don't realize that you should go back mid after that so you're just like sitting bot lane for a while and then you go up through mid in the wrong path and then you have to jump over the wall and then you know you're missing like three waves in that whole time right so it's just like a misunderstanding of like because the lane cs has gotten better it's just like not really understanding where to be after that yep um okay 31 minute game 188 cs yeah. yeah um so probably similar issues 19 support assists nice okay yeah, and really definitely popped off crazy Aurelia game okay good to know i just want to take a look at that stuff beforehand um all right so that was tempo inspiration it's okay as long as we're not going biscuits we should never go biscuits hopefully we have um boots cosmic We always want to pass straight to try brush. We don't want to walk around the red like this. If the enemy team passes here fast, they get here in time to hook you from the push. Not really a threat this game, but in other games, if you're passing that way, you will get caught for it. 
since you're like two or three seconds slower. really bad CSing. In lanes like this, if you're not being contested especially, you don't need to use abilities to push and you don't need to use abilities to CS. You're missing a lot of CS here for no reason. You're not being, pre like, if you're not being hit by the enemy team in any capacity, you should not be missing a single minion. If you're missing minions like this, you definitely need to go into uh, practice tool. Because, like, no one's pressuring you off these. No one's doing anything to you. There's no reason you should be missing these. Especially because, like, you're trying to use abilities to get them to, and you're still missing them, which is just, like, really bad. Because you're using mana and cooldowns to try and get minions, which should be a guarantee, right? Yeah, this gets really bad here. You have a Sona, you don't need healing, and Zaya doesn't have an issue with mana cost anymore. Good Feather Pull. Yep, give it a kill. Should hard crash the wave here because we can play on low HP Soraka and just poke her out under tower. And we just want to crash the wave so that we're not in range of like jungle gank because we see our own Vi on top side, right? So we're not really worried about their jungle being top side because Vi's in their jungle and he's not seeing him. So we should be worried about him being bot side. So the ward's okay, but wards don't matter when they're placed this close to you if you're pushed up this far. The gank will still go off and you'll still have to flash, and losing sums is dying to a gank essentially. Yep, we'll come spot. Yeah. So you end up not having to use anything just because, you know, they play it really bad. Oh. Wow, they play it really bad. Wow, they play it really bad. Dex, we were gifted this one. Okay, we should just hard push the wave and then insta recall. Hard push the wave. Use abilities to hard push the wave. You should be hard pushing the wave here. What is the benefit of you doing what you're doing? This is these these are the moments where it like what I say, so it sounds a little condescending, but what I say and it, it it's it's truthful is if I were to pause this moment in time and ask you right now, what benefit do you gather? Like, what? how does it benefit you to do what you're doing right now? You wouldn't be able to answer me. You couldn't actually give me an answer for why you just did what you did. Which means that you're not thinking. Because in the game, you need to be asking yourself that question. Every single time a wave is in front of you, you need to be asking yourself that question. There is no excuse for not doing that. The CS is really, really bad, by the way, in this lane. We're hard winning the lane. We've had free reign over every CS in the lane, and we've gotten like 50% of them. It's really, really bad. You should be up 20 CS. You should have like 600 more gold than you have. And we should just be hard crashing this wave. This is again, we have 1400 gold, and we're not backing to spend it, even though we have free opportunity to hard crash a wave and, send, and spend it. And you have red buff and blue buff, and you're not utilizing it to win the lane. Double buffs is such an impactful resource on lane. You can literally walk up and just hard all in these guys. You have both sums up. You have multiple pots and biscuits. Like, just walk up and hard trade these guys and kill them. Like, either hard trade them and throw the wave and back or kill them. You have double buffs. We just wasted an entire timer of double buffs doing absolutely nothing except missing most of the CS. Like here, we just don't pay attention to where Twitch could be. We don't respect it. We need to be popping pot. This is something we also talked about. You pop pot really late there. Just pop it the second he pops up on you. There's no reason to hold it. Yeah. Yeah, really bad ability usage. Really bad ability usage and really bad passing. Letting ourselves get minion blocked like that.
Yeah, he just picked up Zaya. Yeah, Zaya, I would say we shouldn't be playing in rank just yet. We should definitely be going like like Norms obviously are okay to practice and then definitely be practicing in bot games. Because I, I would say it, it like this looks like someone who's playing Zaya for the first time in their life. And it doesn't particularly look like you've even watched someone play a game of Zaya before. So why do we take biscuits? We have three biscuits up, we're low HP, and we didn't even pop one. So why do we have biscuits? Pretty useless rune, huh? It's fine to sit on the skull, you could also just go dagger. Berserkers feel pretty good on Zaya, so it's fine to go them before first mythic. Sometimes. Depends on like if you're this ahead, right? About anything is never on my radar. But here, this is an example, like we have 30 CS at seven minutes and we took a really bad back timer because we overstayed and overcommitted and messed up a fight and then we couldn't, like we weren't allowed to be in control of our own back timer. So we miss an entire wave on tower and now we're 33 CS at seven minutes, which is abysmal because we haven't even really been particularly fighting, right? We haven't even really been like losing CS because we've been trading. We just lost CS because we missed them. It's really, really bad. Shut down. Okay, got the cannon. We should hard push this wave and then look for a deep pink on his blue. Maybe take the scuttle. We're slow pushing instead of just using abilities on the wave here. You need to make sure, no, no, you need to make sure this wave hits tower before their wave gets there. This wave has to hit tower. You have a timer to go get a ward. Go get a ward on blue. Go steal scuttle. Do something productive. This is another moment where if I pause and ask you, why are you doing what you're doing? How is this beneficial? You could not give me an answer. If we hard crashed that wave, took Scuttle, got a deep ward, come back to lane, it would have been neutral. We could have looked for trades, we could have looked for poke. If they pushed it super hard, you could catch a tower and start slow stacking, and then you crash the wave on 2 3, and then you can look for uh, recall and either full buy your boots or buy pickaxe and dagger. Pickaxe control ward. But instead, we're just like, we're not using our lead to our advantage, we're not trading anything. We're not CSing well. We don't have good wards. We're not playing to anything. We are letting the game happen to us. Like your jungle's not passing down to you. So why are you worried about playing at your tower? Like why are you letting them push in when you don't have a reason to? Your jungle's not coming. So they're not gonna overextend into a gank. You had an opportunity to get a deep ward, so you don't have to worry about ganks. So this was a huge timer to be able to play for ourselves and play to facilitate a lead, and we just did nothing for like three straight minutes. And now we're sitting on 1400 gold again without doing anything. We're sitting on 1400 gold again, and we're still slow pushing this wave. We're still not just like using abilities to push this. There we go. Now use feathers on the back line and pull them. You can one shot this wave. Yeah. If you use all your feathers on the back line and then position yourself behind the melees, like in front of the melees on your side, you can just pull the feathers and almost instantly the entire wave. We should recall on this crash. We have 1600 gold. I, I cannot stress, there is maybe one time out of 10 that it is ever the right play to sit on this much gold and still be in lane. Maybe one play out of 10, probably more like one out of 20. So the fact that it's happened in two games is really bad. Like this is an insane amount of gold that you're sitting on. The only time you ever have this much gold and you haven't recalled yet is when you suddenly get four kills and this amount of gold just appears in your inventory. You never see us casually to this much gold without backing. So now dragon's coming up. So you really want to back and get an item spike for dragon but you haven't recalled. So now you have to back late, which means they can just do the dragon while you're gone because you didn't back. 
we still haven't popped our biscuits. We just full traded and got silenced by Sarakan and haven't used our biscuits yet. What are they here for? Okay, we pop one. See? And now, instead of being able to play on Priya with your item lead, you gave up Dragon for free for no reason. We've recovered a bit in the CS department, but, but, you know, there's no reason to not be 10 CS a minute here. If you can go into a custom game and wait, you could have full by Gale Force, why'd you buy booth? You just wait two seconds, sell your biscuits and full by Gale Force. This is a really bad buy. You overstayed, you may as well spend the money on something useful.
Right. It's also important that, like, it's important to know that, like, you've become aware of the basics on that on that graph. Like, you know, you've learned the basics, but you haven't fully integrated. Because to integrate something, you need to be able to do it. You know, it becomes habitual, right? It becomes something that you fundamentally know how to do. You can you can falter on it sometimes, but most often it's something that you're not really going to fail at, right? You've you've you know, otherwise it's just something you know, and sometimes you do it. To integrate it means that you're capable of doing it pretty much all the time. Um, and what we saw in like these vods is that the basics that you previously were trying to integrate, you've gotten a little lost in the lost in the sauce, right? You you're playing well, you think you're playing better, so you're not so much focusing on those previous things. You know, you're not putting so much of a priority on like, okay, I need to learn these things because you feel like you've learned them. And what's happening is you're getting worse at them because they weren't fully integrated yet. So previously, you never used your E. We told you about using E. So you started using your E, you put a focus on it. And then once you got too comfortable, now you've stopped using E again because you didn't let it fully integrate. Um, so that's an example of like, you know, you need to let those basics integrate. You need to really make sure that you're maintaining your focus on this improvement. Do not think that like, it's not like an RPG game where once you unlock the skill, it's unlocked forever, no matter what you do from that point on. You you will regress if you do not continue to focus. Um, so make sure that you're really focusing on, like, continuing to integrate those skills. I think it, I think it's okay if you want to open up your champ desire, but you you need to put a lot more work on it. Um, you just, it's not something you should be playing in ranked right now. Um, it's Uh, he can't, hey, uh, are you sure you're not muted on stream? I definitely was muted on stream. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. Um, oh god, was I muted for that whole thing? I think so. Seriously? Yeah. Oh no. Like, was I muted for the higher order skills? Can anybody in chat confirm? Is anybody in chat? Nobody is in chat. I'm sad. Oh, okay. I can I can't confirm or deny whether or not you were muted for the squiggly graph, as Gavin put it, because that's when he came in. But <laughs> sure. At least at least for everything after that, you were muted. Okay. Well, we'll assume that I was not muted for the squiggly graph. Worst case scenario, I'll 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 put together uh, an explanation for him if he says he uh, says you. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, but most specifically, we want to we, we want to take these things down to pretty basics here. I want you to play Jin. I want you to just play Jin. I know Suki, you say like if you want to incorporate Zaya, like we I want to remove any and all distractions and barriers from us learning second order skills, which means playing the thing that you're most comfortable with. Um, so pretty simply. Two notes. Utilize your E throughout the game in various ways, as Suki has suggested. Use it defensively, use it offensively, take space with it, deny space with it. That's those things. And then most specifically, wave management and back timings. Make sure you are handling your wave as you need to, back when it is appropriate and you have gold. Uh, if you are confused or have questions about what this is and how it works, let us know. Like, ping us in the Discord. We will find more clear examples to show you of how to do this specifically. But I want to see a VOD that is you playing Jin, utilizing your E, 
and utilizing appropriate wave management and back timings. Can we, uh, I, I think for micro, we should put uh, what I said after the first slide, which is more so like, just like make sure you're using every piece of your kit. Like just make sure you're using the abilities that you have available to you, you know, use your heal, use your gale force, use your E. I think it's, it's a more general tip. Because, like, just using the E, I feel like, you know, it's, it's super gin specific. Obviously, it's something he does need to work on because he's, he's regressed a bit on it. But it's also just, like, it's it's an overhead concept that all applies to the same thing, right? Like, if you if you learn to start using everything in your arsenal, using your E will come with that. Whereas, like, if you're just focusing on using the E, you're not necessarily going to attribute that to everything else. Yeah. But that's, like, when we look at this next game, I'm going to be looking at this specifically. But you should also be putting that in. Like, I am doing what I can here to make these as simple as possible so that we can really focus on wave management. how to handle early game. Yep, and okay. we do have a wave management guide in required reading. Oh, perfect. If you okay. need to refresh. But yeah, that's the one you, that you posted, remember? Yeah. Um, so like, if you need a refresher on that, if you don't really know where to start, if you're in those lanes, like if you, if you watch this VOD and you go into games and you start thinking to yourself, okay, like Suki said, why why am i doing what i'm doing what how does it benefit me and you feel like you just don't know after that game go watch that that required reading go watch that wave management guide and look through the options to see like was does one of these fit was one of these actually what i should have been doing um and learn to apply that okay perfect and that hopefully we will be able to bring you up out of bronze and be prepared for higher ranks Spoon time. We did a spoon VOD that I... Oh, there we go. Duh. Okay. Come to VOD review with questions next time. You did that. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a look at those in a second. Watch Procacid and VODs. Watch Showy Coats earlier VODs. Um, start queue and range mas matchups. Pretty small, simple one. Focus on getting CS, keeping up with enemy CS, and wave behavior, and get Roa 6 and 11 as early as possible. So let's take a look at these questions. Bot submissions. Notes questions with timestamps. Okay. So we'll, I'll keep these up on the side, and I'll bring them up as we kind of see what's happening, but they're a general one. So, against a lane bully that shoves me into turret and likes to ro roam around my lane, my thought process is to farm and only leave lane when I know they're where she is or I am with a teammate. Is this smart, or is there a better way to think about playing the lane? What do I do about my lane, not specific to this game, when my lane opponent goes pot and gets a double kill? Is there something I should be looking to trade, or should I contest something like that, even though they can one-shot me in a 1v1 outside of lane? So, obviously, context is king yep. in League of Legends. Um, so things will change, but in terms of base advice, um, against a lane bully that loves to shove you into turrets, something that can push wave faster than you and can push you off wave so that you have to catch wave, um, you just look to catch the wave, guarantee the, the gold, guarantee the CS. Um, leaving lane has more to do with when you have a timer, right? If they hard shove into you and you see that they're recalling, that means that you have a timer to look for a roam, even though technically they're the better roamer, right? It also means you have a timer to match their recall. If they went ignite and you went TP, it means that you have a better timer to TP back to lane, hard push the wave, and then look for a roam before they get back, because they have to catch that wave like you do typically now, right? Um... So there's a lot of variance in it, but typically you're looking to manipulate the wave and manipulate the circumstance so that you look for the right timer. You're looking for your turn to play, or you're looking to capitalize on a mistake they make on their turn. So if they walk an unsafe path um, and you have a teammate there, or you can look for a short trade, you know, like if Kiana hard pushes the wave and then tries to walk through your side of the lane down towards bot, you can look for a cage and just like quick trade and now she's gonna, like gonna try and trade on you and you just play range and walk away, take the quick trade and now she wasted time. Either she'll commit to go back to the wave or she'll commit to going bot lane even though it's worse timer for her and she's a lower HP. Um, looking for little things like that are typically what you wanna look for. Um, and then if you want to be moving to something, like if they have a Kiana and you're Vagar and she wants to roam bot lane, if you're kind of neutral and can kind of match the timer, you obviously don't want to walk in and die. But essentially what you would do is you would walk the safe path 
you would like hard shove your wave or let the wave remain neutral and then walk the safe path bot lane so that you can be there for if the fight becomes extended to clean up kills or to play it back with your team or to play under tower etc um capitalize on mistakes on the dive things like that um but that's like a, a decision you have to make like when you look bot lane when you look where kiana's going like when you look towards your bot lane you see what the wave state is bot lane you know kiana's going there that's when you make that decision for yourself do I think that this fight is going to go long enough for me to get there late, even if I go save? Do I think it's better for me to push mid, get plate, and a recall? Um, could I even look for a top lane roam now that I know for a fact Kiana or someone is going bot lane? That means I'm totally safe to walk top lane for a gank, right? Um, things like that are how you look to trade across the map on those. Um, but it is very situational. Sometimes it's going to be better to just kill the wave and recall. Sometimes it'll be better just to um, try and like trade them a little bit to dissuade them from roaming. Sometimes it's better to try and slow match or trade on cross side of map. Um, but those are like the the various options that you have in that moment, right? Um, let's uh let's get into yeah, vod and I think that, yeah, I think we'll that answers most of those questions. Yeah, I think so too. We'll we'll get into what I think those were his only like out of game specific questions. ones. Um, is there any is there any particular difference? or any kind of heuristics or things you can think of when it comes to my opponent is leaving lane, I cannot follow them, should I hard shove or leave lane at neutral? Is there any particular, like, good decision to be made there, or are you looking for one particular thing that will kind of well, cause like you I, to think? Like I just said, it's, it's kind of dependent on, like, the game, right? The sure. champions, uh, and that's why I said, like, you know, look bot lane, see what see what's happening in the lane that they're roaming to. Is your bot lane under tower? Because that means you can probably roam down late and catch them after their dive, right? Yeah. If is your bot lane under their tower? Because that means they're probably gonna die and then you're just gonna walk back to their base, right? You can't chase that. Um that's kinda like the nuance of what's going on bot lane. Like what's the HP, what's the wave state, what's the thing of the chins? Do you feel like you can clean up if you get there late, or do you feel like you're just gonna get there and maybe try and chase some kills and potentially not get anything, and then the risk of going there isn't worth the uh, the reward, right? Um so that's kind of what you're looking for. I it's was saying that, like, more specifically, what do I want to leave my lane at? So I'm playing mid, my enemy, my enemy mid laner leaves. What um, makes me decide if I want to hard shove my wave or just leave it at neutral? Is it just timing? Uh, where the waves are and how quickly you can facilitate your own shove. Got it. So if you're someone like Twisted Fate, post level 5, who can look just like red card the front wave, instantly Q, pretty much clear all the minions at once, and then follow the roam, then sure, just insta clear your wave, why not? You can do it instantly, right? Um, if you're someone like... Uh, I think I'm right now. Someone more like Ari, who, like, her Q's on a longer cooldown, it's harder for her to, like, insta push, like, she kind of has to use multiple iterations of cooldown. Um, and you uh, could just the wave you could just leave it then, at neutral based on timing. Then if it's yeah, then if it's neutral where like that person maybe shoved and then kind of hesitated a bit and then started walking and the waves are gonna meet again, then you can just leave it, leave it neutral because neither team is gonna like really get a, a slow push built off that. It's a neutral wave. Right. Um, if they hard push your wave and it's coming into your tower and then they move, you do have to clear that wave before you leave. Right. Okay. You can't just let it hit your tower. Good. Thank you for clarifying. Um, who are our opponents in this? Is it Kiana? Is that why you brought up Kiana? No, no, no. I just brought up Kiana because she's like a, a stereotypical um, roaming mid laner. A tris. She's one of those. She's one of those mid laners that'll just like coin flip roam to other lanes all the time. Yep. Probably this one. Six point seven CS a minute. Five point five KDA. Yeah, not the worst CS. Nope. Pretty close to seven. Obviously, we want it higher than that, right? But pretty close to seven is okay. Okay. Cool. Um, build is pretty good. Everfrost is good here. I do notice that you go Everfrost every game. That's definitely not the play. Um, Everfrost, you go into short range matchups that like to move into you. Um, Rod of Ages, Seraphs is better against teams that have burst and that you need to play more zone control on that can't, like, you know, you can't. They're not going to be, like, diving onto you. They're not melee range, right? So Everfrost is really low value. So definitely should be swapping it up a bit more than what it looks like you're doing. But. In this game, I think Everfrost is good, so you're fine. Looks like no sound on the VOD, which is fine. I'm just letting everybody know. Yeah. 
So as Vigor, we actually don't want to be CSing primarily with Q. Um, you want to be looking to get both CS and poke the enemy champion with your Q. Um, and if you have to choose between one or the other, just go for the poke on the champion. And get the CS with a with an auto. Because you get stacks by hitting champions, so you may as well be poking or doing damage to your laner while you're getting stacks, rather than using that to get CS. Like, just only CS, right? In one case, you're getting both the CS and poking them, and in the other case, you're just getting a CS and not doing anything to your laner. Um, so... Like that. That was incidental, but... <laughs> yeah, but it's good. It's yeah. good to spark first strike off it. Sure, it's CSing in lane definitely needs some work. It's not very good. Um, we're just not very aware of like how much damage our Q does, you know, when we can get CS with autos. We're not very aware of like the pressure we have to look for poke on Tristana. Like, what's a risky timer to look for poke? What's a good timer to look for poke? We're kind of just like incidentally looking for poke whenever Tristana walks up, which is okay because we obviously don't want to like coin flip her jumping on us. But you know, if you feel like Tristana's going to jump on you like that and your Jax is nearby, you can just ping it and then look like look to force her all in and play with Jax, look on cage, and then it's just good for you because if she gets chunked out on a Jax sync while her wave is pushing, which Tristana's always going to push because her E naturally pushes waves. Um, then she's fucked because she can't um she can't contest that you're freezing now under her tower like under your tower because Jax could still be there and she can't walk up into you because she's low hp after the gank so we want to be thinking about like how can we take advantage of what the enemy laner is doing how can we prevent them from being able to push this for free um what options do i have for to, to poke is it actually that bad for me if they all in me if I know that they want all in me, how can I take advantage of that? Those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, this is our first note. Uh, 210, I see Tristana leave lane and the jungles spot each other. What's a better decision that I could have made before leaving lane? Okay, play it and see what happens. We have to wait for the jungles to spot each other. Jack's on the scuttle. Uh, we just don't move for this. So, so what this was, was you just getting baited by your teammate. If your teammate does something int, it's not your job to save them from doing it. Um, typically, it's just really bad for you, like how this ends up being. Um, you should have just hard pushed your wave and gotten a recall off so you could come back to lane and match Tristana. You can't do anything to help your Jax there. Even if he kites down to you, he's dead. So the best decision you could have made is you could have looked towards that Jax, Realized that was a losing fight. Acknowledged it was a losing fight. Hard pushed your wave. Recall. Now Yi doesn't have a timer to look on a mid gank while you're gone. And you get to just go recall for free after a pushed wave. And, and come back and your wave stays neutral, right? So that's like what I was saying before. When like before the game started. Where I was talking about. Here we don't need to move to this. This is bad. Yeah, you just lost if a bunch of minions. Down, yep, we're losing a bunch of minions. Replacing a really bad ward. Yeah, a lot of XP minions lost here for no reason. Those minions are hitting your tower. You lost like 120 gold there. Not even factoring in XP. Really, really, really bad. You need to be looking, because you didn't even look at that fight, right? You didn't even look to see what the HP bars were. You didn't look to see which abilities were being used. Because if you did, you would have seen that it was a hard winning fight. And you didn't need to be there and you're never going to catch up. So if you actually looked at the fight, you would have known that like you just don't need to go. You wouldn't have missed any of the CS. So we, we feel really attached to the idea of moving away from our lane, probably because we feel like we've been yelled at it before. Like we've been yelled at by people for like not moving before and we feel pressured to like not tilt people or to perform and you just need to ignore them because that's just a bad play, right? Okay. You see Yi here on Dragon, so we should be playing towards their top side. We should be playing up in the lane so they have less of an opportunity to gank us. So 
So on waves like this, where you have three cash from the cannon, what you can do is you can W those two minions on the side in the back wave, and then auto one of them, Q the cannon and the caster to kill those, and then auto the caster again to guarantee that one, and then you just need to double auto the uh, the third one under tower shot to get all four. So just like understanding how to set up minions under tower, right? Understanding like how to use abilities to see us under tower on Vagar. So we are level six here, but because we took some bad trades and we've been using our abilities on repeat, um, and not very effectively, we've lost a lot of HP and a lot of mana, and we haven't really traded any of that back under the Trist, so even though we're 6, we just don't have a timer to play aggressively. Um, what I would do here is just hard shove this wave, I just W the back line, Q the melees, if Tristana walks up, just place Cage and walk away, wait for your cooldowns and play the same way again, and then just get Recall, because you want to get Lost Chapter here. So just hard shove and then Recall, because she can't hold the wave and freeze on you because it's Tristana, her E will not totally shove the wave, she can't freeze. Okay, here is note number two. I am out of mana and need to back, but my jungler tries stealing Drake, and most of the enemy team goes bot and kills my bot lane. Is there anything within my power to maybe sway the odds of that fight, or am I just better off backing and consolidating my own farm by staying mid after backing? No, I think you just back um, here, right? <laughs> you, you just back and go mid. Yeah. Yep. Realistically, you should, like I said, you should be hard shoving. So, if you do what I say... Like, if you do what I had said was good here, where you hard shove the WQ and just look to recall as fast as possible, that play might go better for Jax, because Tristana can't roam to it so fast, because she has to stay to catch wave at tower while you're backing. Yeah, as you can see, your, um, your wave really only so, got to here, and Trist is not so, losing anything. So that would have been potentially better for you um, if you had just hard shoved that, gotten your recall for last chapter, Trist would have had to catch it, Maybe Jack still ints, maybe bot lane still dies, not much you can do about that, but it at least would have given them a better chance, and you would have been on a better timer, and this wave wouldn't have been so awful for you. You need to be Wing the casters, there's no reason not to be hard shoving this. There we go. You should do that instantly, that shouldn't be something you hesitate for. We want to get a deep ward here, there's no reason to get close wards, versus Tristana and Yi, if you're placing wards like this, by the time you see them, you're already dead. So we want a ward, we want the pink behind red buff. Right where Jax is about to walk in, that bush. We want to pink in there. And we want the regular ward either on Raptors, or if we think he's going to be topside, we place it above that little wall close to where you walk in from blue. Wards closer to you than that just aren't useful because Tristana's already going to be on you and he's just going to catch up with his R. We aren't really utilizing pings to communicate to our jungler like what's happening. You know? Because you have a lot of angles on here where you could play Cage or kill on Tristana, potentially, but you're just not pinging. Why is Jax even there? What he killed the unread. Oh, I get he, it. Oh, he, he killed the unread. And he he could have gone back to Alistar and went yep. the other way. Yep. Yep. So here, like, realistically, you should have been aware of that, and you should have been spam, like, back pinging Jax. He might still die, but just in terms of, like, optimizing the chance that he knows danger is coming and he gets out as fast as possible, you should just, like... When you see Trist leave lane and you know your Jax just killed someone on red buff, you should just be like spam danger pinging him out. Yeah, and you had a question note here. Is Jax savable here? I feel like if I try to walk to him, I just get mowed down by Trist. You do. Yeah, you don't, you right? don't, you you, don't have to walk to him. He's savable yeah. insofar as you tell him, get the hell out of there. Yeah, like you can put effort into giving him the information he needs to know that he needs to get out as fast as possible because his him dying or living could be, for future reference, could be the difference between... Um, sorry, uh, could be the difference between him ward hopping as fast as possible or like leisurely taking a path out because he thinks he's okay, right? So spam danger pinging in there is way more important than just like missing pinging once, right? Here we're playing for some, so here's, this is the first really bad mistake I've seen if you go back. Yep. I think it starts here when you start this freeze. No, it's so it's what happens right. It's happening kind of right here, but it's okay. But it starts happening right about here. Right here. You're playing on the top side of your wave when all of your vision is on your bot side. Right? We want to play to where our vision is so that we can play away from where the enemy champions might be. So we took time to place all this vision on bot side, and then we played to our top side. It's just a little nonsensical, right? Like, you're asking to get all into there. Oh, 
fine. We use TP to get back. We can auto that minion and then queue the next one. Yep. So CSing under tower needs a little bit of work. CSing in general needs a little bit of work. You don't need to move here. You need to shove your wave. Yeah, you're not saving yeah. him. Yeah. At this point in the game, Jax has proven to you that he's going to int. Especially if he starts running towards top like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just need to go push your wave. You know, if you had gone to push this wave immediately instead of taking all that time, this wave's probably on tower already. And then you see Trist is still committing. Yeah, you get multiple plates here if you just hard commit. From the beginning. Play on tower. Play on tower. Play on tower. No, 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 no. Don't walk to that. She's 200 HP. Play on tower. Plates. Unironically, the minions, the XP, and the plates are worth three times the gold that this Trist is worth. And now the wave isn't even you know, the wave isn't even hitting tower. This is really, really bad. This is like a game losing move. Question here: Why did this play go so sloppy? If it did, we'll see. Was there a better way of making this play? Do I tank the turret? Why does Nasus just stand there? Is he liable for my execution? Is there any way I suffered from this play? But very basically, you don't need to be here. <laughs> like, yeah, this is this being here in the first place is a game losing play. You shouldn't be anywhere near this. You have. Like, you get two plates, two whole waves, and you crash a three-stacked wave on mid-tower if you don't move to this. Because you move to this, you don't get any of that, and you're just getting one kill off it. Well, and you didn't... There you go. Okay. I mean... Just walk up and press R. Just walk up and press yeah, R. Yeah, just go press R. R. This, was in, this was entirely your fault. It's, yeah, entirely your fault. If you go back. Let's go back. Go back, go back, go back. So we walk out a little early here. We need to let Nasus crash the wave before we walk out. I know we're trying to deny recall, but there's just no point. All you have to do is walk up and press R. Yep, right here. You place gauge, walk up, press R. Walk up, press R. Don't even take aggro before you press R. Just walk up and press R. You can you can walk up QR at the same time, and you guarantee kill, and then you just walk out through lane and you're gone, right? Why are we looking for Q? Why are we looking for W? And then we, we make the choice to go back in. If we go back five seconds, let's go back five seconds and pause. So we walk away as if we're going to drop tower aggro, misplay the range, keep the tower aggro, walk back in and keep tanking and commit to it. L literally, all you have to do here is walk out and stop tanking. Nasus gets the kill and it's good. If Nasus doesn't get the kill, you walk in and then R her before tower starts aggro again and it's the freest kill in the world. This is like, yeah. This is like... Stop typing. Yeah. Like, yeah, you should, you should be full muted. You should have chat off. There's no reason to type. I think I think you're muted, but chat is not off. I think I think that they have everybody else muted, but they don't yeah, have their chat yeah, yeah, off. Yeah. Turn chat off, yeah. But yeah, I mean that's like I said, that's a game losing play. Pretty much every single thing you did there was wrong. We shouldn't leave the mid wave. We should understand the value of CS, XP, and plates and pressure. Um and if we're going to go for the dive, we need to at least understand how to prioritize aggro and how to drop turret aggro. And we should at least know our damage ratios on our champion to know that we can just QR her there. Here we have Everfrost, so we can just start trading on Tristana. She can't really commit to you because you can just Everfrost her if she tries to go in. So now is when you can start taking some more trades. This is where I am shoving the wave as hard as possible. Yep. You should be shoving mid. So you've gotten so caught up in this idea of what should I be doing that you haven't done anything. Every single time Tristana's roamed, you've done absolutely nothing. And not in the way that like you just sat mid and farmed and did nothing, just in the way that you literally don't even farm. You walk away and you esky and you do nothing. So if you're asking like if there's something better to do here, then like, yeah, there's there, there's always something better to do here because you're not doing anything. That tower should so, be dead. Like or at least at like one plate well, at this point in the game, be, right? Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't be dead because it gets tankier and tankier as yeah. the plates drop, so Vager has a hard time taking like the fourth or fifth plate, but he would have at least three down by now, yeah. He would have like about three plates down. Probably only three. 
but he would definitely be like past mythic spike here probably building rabbit on second feeling really good about how much gold he has looking to one shot new on this next fight and then if you were csing better too like you know roaming for this is okay you shove your wave and then you moved there's yep. no reason to r blitz there he's a support and he was already dead see tristana's dead here if you don't use r and blitz for no reason so you know be aware of what we need to use use our abilities with purpose Good cage. Good QW. Oh, there you go. Now we just walk back mid. We should just walk back mid, insta full clear this wave, and then recall. Mid WQ. Don't clear wards. It's not your job. It is not your job. It is not your job. This is not your job. The objective is down, that pink is useless, the 30 gold is less than the gold you will lose by not getting to mid lane faster, and it's not your job. You have to push the mid wave. That didn't crash, you have to push that. That didn't crash. You didn't push it fast enough, so it didn't crash, and now that wave is stacking and freezing and you're losing 300 gold by the time you get back to lane and you didn't even need to move in the first place. And now we have to stay when Trist to spot Kraken. Really, really brutal sequence for the last like five minutes. Just recall here. Recall on the neutral wave. This is hard. You're just waiting to die here. Eventually, Yi comes mid. And like even if you don't die, like you can't contest her push, so she's able to just like if she wanted to just roam. She could have just looked top lane here. Like she had that wave pushed so early on you, she could have just looked top. We're not thinning the wave at all because we're so focused on looking for poke. So Tristan is allowed to just push the wave in and it takes you much longer time to clear it under tower because you haven't thinned it. So her timer to move is a lot longer than if you had just thinned it properly. The MIA, the, uh, MIA pings are coming out really late. You should be, the second the wave is pushed and crashed on your tower, you should be pinging MIA because you know she can't dive you. She can't play under tower on you. So she's either going to S key in Fog of War or she's going to go roam. So you should just be pinging MIA the second she pushes like that because you know you're going to have to catch the wave, right? If she moved instantly, your MIA ping there is like 10 seconds late. She's already top lane. Another okay. instance where you could probably save your R, I think, right? Yeah, you can just Everfrost QW. It's a low cooldown there, so it's okay because like, realistically, you're not going to be fighting further than that. Yeah. She'll be back up if the next fight happens, so it's fine. But yeah, you don't theoretically you don't need to. So Trist is dead. We have a control ward in our inventory. We know that we have a timer to hard shift mid, either get tower damage or look for a deep ward for vision. Or optimally both. Okay. Did we just blue trinket? Did we just blue trinket dragon for no reason? It's not up. Why did we use blue trinket there? Just checking in. Power <laughs> 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 the kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really bad, bad blue trinket. Really, really bad. Vision is really important. And you, you know, you did actively nothing with that. And if I, if I had paused the game, you know, and asked you why you were using that blue trinket there, you couldn't have given me a reason. There's actively no reason. You saw Blitz and Ezreal on mid. You saw one person top lane. You saw one person bot lane. You knew that the only objective was Herald. You had push mid. There's just like zero reason to ever think, you know. In these situations, once your bot lane gets tower and moves to mid, you need to be leaving mid. You should be catching bot wave. You shouldn't be here at all. You're like 
in in a losing game state, trading towers like this, especially trading a tier two for a tier one as their comp, feels so good. The fact that you're giving them gold, like realistically, their team shouldn't be allowed to get anything, especially not for free, right? They just got a like, four hundred gold bounty and a tier two tower, which is five hundred gold split. Um, and all the CS and minions, and they're still pushing, and you're still mid for no reason. This is very normal. The bot lane moves mid after first tower is gone. That flash was really weird. You never kill him. You're not in range for R. You're not, like, your Q range is longer than your R range. You're never in range for, for R on that follow-up. I don't understand that flash at all. Especially because you're Vagar, who's, like, a really a mobile champion versus Yi and Tristana. You can't be wasting flash for nothing. You can't even really afford to be using it aggressively. They're ending the game on you. Why are you still <laughs> mid? <laughs> It's funny because the entirety of this early game, we were talking about how, like, most of this situation is Tristana is not your problem. She goes away, you ping her, you let her know, you handle your mid lane, right? And now towards the end of the game, <laughs> Trist is still doing it back in spawn, and you're just like, not my problem now. It's, it's one of those things where, like, it's not necessarily that Trist is your problem, it's the fact that Jinx and Alistar being able to move to both sides of the map sooner is why it's better to have them in mid lane. Yep. And you can just catch waves safely on bot lane and continue farming up and use teleport to be on fights on objectives on top side and on bot side by walking there. So it's just more optimal for bot lane to be mid and for you to catch waves bot and then move to fights when you when the team needs you or move to zone control when you need to set up. So there's no reason for you to be mid. The fact that Jinx had to leave her support to go bot lane without TP to try and catch waves and try and prevent them from ending the game is really bad. It's not like, it's not that you, your job is to cover Triss, it's, your job is to properly macro. Your job is to catch the waves so they can't push. Doesn't matter who's there, doesn't matter if it's Urgot or if it's, or if it's Tristana, obviously you're going to move into like whichever is the most favorable matchup for both top and mid, but you're just catching waves to make sure that you can maintain tempo and pressure on the map. Yeah, this, uh, this being mid lane just made no sense. That ward's okay. Boak. We should feel more comfortable using Cage. It's a very low cooldown at this stage in the game. They can't, like, in, in those situations, they can't really punish you for using it. If as you're, like, ease forward or something, you just, you know, you ever frost R him and he dies. So it's not like he can punish you for using cage and missing it. And if he gets trapped in the cage and you just ever frost QR him, he has to burn E. Then you just get to hit the wave for free, right? Nasus should be catching that, but in these situations where. Like, he's bot lane, he's not moving. It is your job to move to cover it. You can insta-clear waves. Like, literally, WQ insta-kills every wave at this point in the game is Vagar. So the fact that they're allowed to push these waves on you and you're not just going and full-clearing them is really bad. They shouldn't be allowed to have a wave. You can insta-kill it. That's a bad cage. You can place that further out than that. You can actually zone them off of auto range of the tower so they can't hit it at all. Here, we should cage over wall on Blitzcrank and Urgot. Okay, we realize it, but a little late. But okay. Oh, I'll start trolled that, but it's fine. Don't type. We're fighting bot lane. Bot lane's dead. We should be going Baron. We should already be moving Baron here. We don't need to look bot lane. You can see we should be going Baron. Please go Baron. There's no wave coming. You see that the next wave is on Inhib. We're still upset at the Nasus for that top lane. And why are we typing? You should be on Baron here, dude. Yeah, your team just lost because of you. This is, yeah. I mean, between the top roam play and staying mid and letting them take bot and then this whole play, I... Yeah. I think this game is... Pretty much entirely on you. Why are we not using Everfrost here? Just Everfrost over the wall while they're in trap. You kill everyone here if you ever frost over the wall. 
Oh, now we used it too late. We misplaced W. Okay, at least we live with Baron. Lose tower for it though. We should go Zonia's into this comp. There you aren't really building magic resist. You don't need void. It's okay to go void, but it's way better to go Zonia's for if uh, Yi and Tristana get on you. Yeah, I don't know if you guys end up winning this game. I think you do, but if if you had lost this game, it would have been off the back of literally only things that you did. Like, obviously, your team didn't play perfect, but they played well enough to win. Why are we typing? Please stop typing. You need to you need to mute yourself. You need to type slash deafen when you get in games. These people aren't like your your you know white team. They're not they're not white teammates. These people don't matter. You'll never see them again. Talking to them doesn't matter. You're not saying anything productive. You're not teaching them anything. It doesn't matter if you do teach them anything. If they don't do it in this game, it doesn't matter. Typing to them is just super irrelevant. Everfrost. We need to be using Everfrost more. Just follow up on the chain CC. It's such a short cooldown. Oh, if we had stopwatch here, this feels a lot better. Oh, controlled it. Nice. Yeah, if we go stopwatch there, we don't have to flash. We run it down mid now, or we're gonna see a surrender soon. Yep. Should just be a, like we just group dragon here. I doubt it's a run it down mid. If anything, maybe they over contest. No, they're all dead. It should be an FF. Yeah. It's either an FF or Nasus. Just <laughs> or Nasus is just somehow. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Which he shouldn't be able to with just divine and frozen, like this fast. It should just be an FF. Probably FF when they see that we get like dragon most likely. Or Nasus like kills one two people somehow and they tilt an FF. Yeah, Dragon. Dragon and inhib top lane, okay. Understanding Soul when con is good. You don't necessarily need Soul here. You guys can definitely play just to end the game by going bot while top inhibs down. But at least understanding that you're one point off soul and like being aware to ping that is good. Everfrost. If we ever frost there, we don't get all in. And if we have Zonia's here, it feels really good. Your back timers have also been really bad. You're not paying attention to how much gold you have when you back. So like three or four times you end up using Futures Market to buy an item, which has set you behind like 400 gold in debt total. So you probably have either full void or full zonias if you pay more attention to your back timers and stop future steading yourself. Future stead is only good to play on specific timers. Like on Twisted Fate, taking futures market so you can buy Lost Chapter a little bit early to get back to lane a little bit early is more optimal. Are you getting a call right now? I am, yeah. <laughs> Um, um Suge and I are going to work on notes, but I do need to take that call. Um, so we'll give you some notes, Spoon, um, to put in there in a few. Um, but I gotta, I do have to jump over. Sorry about that, Suge. I wasn't oh, sure if they were going to end up calling, but they did. I mean, it's good timing. We finished the VOD. So. We did finish the VOD. So we'll, uh, we'll write up some notes. I think biggest notes are obviously going to be CS, um, lane priority wave management and then we'll put together some other ones for you as well so we'll uh we'll get those in spoon yep cool all right thank you suki for doing review i appreciate it yep have a good day you too bye